Okay, uh, today we're going to be doing the New York by the book tag with Annie and uh, let's get started. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> All right, so what book is on your nightstand right now? Right now I'm in the middle of Sing Unburied Sing by Jesmyn Ward. It's excellent. I'm halfway through and I wish I was reading that instead of doing this. <laughs> <laughs> what was the last truly great book you've read? Um, okay, that's really tough because I've actually read some really great books this fall, but I think it is Stay With Me. Um, the author is Nigerian and writes really beautifully about infertility and marriage and gosh, it was just amazing. I loved it. And the cover is beautiful too. Look, look, I didn't even plan that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. If you could meet any writer dead or alive, who would it be and what would you want to know? Um... Wait, I only can pick one? Ugh. I want to meet Marilyn Robinson and talk about faith. I also want to talk to Madeline Lingle about the same thing. Uh, <laughs> and Ellen Montgomery and Louise May Alcott about children's literature. Okay. <laughs> uh, what books might we be surprised to find on your bookshelves? Um, yeah, I think you'd be surprised that I read Summa of the Summa in college. <laughs> Uh, so anything, like, I took these great books classes, and I think because I spend so much of my time now around literary fiction and things like that, and that's what I really sell the most, um, I think people will be surprised that I've read a lot of, a lot of kind of heavy weights in terms of world literature. So I think people will be surprised by my great books shelf and collection in my, in my house. Um, how do you organize your personal library? My personal library is organized by genre. Um, I, I used to do it by color, and I know people think that's weird and dumb and lame and not for book lovers, but it was really beautiful, and I knew where my books were, so that's all that mattered. But now I do, um, now I do by genre, and I really like that. That's so like, how I do mine. <laughs> yeah, and I don't. Do you do it by author? Yeah, too? I do it by genre, and then I do it by author. I do it by genre and by who, which books I want paired together. Okay, and then <laughs> I was gonna do it by gender. Uh huh. And like by their last name, but. I just had a lot of women authors, so it was kind of hard. <laughs> There's one room for men yeah. on your show. <laughs> what book have you always meant to read, but you haven't gotten around to it yet? Gosh, we have talked about this on the podcast before, and it is probably um, either like a Jane Austen novel, like um, Sense and Sensibility or Emma. Like I haven't read those. I've only read Pride and Prejudice. Um, I've heard Persuasion. I've heard I would really like Persuasion. But many of my staffers have loved, they've read and loved Jane Eyre. And I'm going to be honest, I I saw the musical and I feel like, meh, that's good enough for me. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> it's like bookish confessions. I don't like Jane Eyre. <laughs> I just don't, I don't have the desire to read Jane Eyre, so... No thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Disappointing, overrated, just not good. What book did you feel like you were supposed to like but you didn't? Okay, so we have this segment on our podcast called Love It or Loathe It, and one of my staffers loved the book Walt. It was like this um, thriller-esque book, and the premise sounded really cool. Like this guy committed crimes and murders based on people's grocery lists he found in the store, which I thought was a fascinating premise, but I just did not like the book. And one of my staffers, who I really respected her taste, she loved it. And mm -hmm. I just, I couldn't do it. I didn't like it. And I hated, I hated that I didn't like it. What kind of stories are you drawn to in anything that you stay clear of? Uh, I love dysfunctional families. I could read pretty much anything about a quirky family's reunion, like some kind of death in the family has brought this group of siblings together. I'm all about adult sibling stories. Um, and then books I avoid, gosh, um, I guess I typically don't read a ton of fantasy, um, which I know you love. Yeah. So I, I think I just haven't maybe found the right ones. Mm -hmm. um, so th it's not that I avoid them. I guess I just, they've never found their way to me. <laughs> okay. If you could require the president to read one book, what would it be? Just see my face. <laughs> okay. Um, if I could require the president to read one book, it's hard to limit it to just one. And it's hard to pick one that I think he would fully understand and appreciate. I think if he read Homegoing, um, mm -hmm. Because it's fiction, it might take him, I would imagine, I don't know, but I would imagine he reads a lot of nonfiction. So I'd like to give him fiction, but with a story so that he can see what immigrants really face and why they come here in the first place. Can I give a runner up to Exit West for the oh, same yeah, reason? That's what I was thinking. <laughs> for the same reason. So Homegoing and Exit West, if I'm allowed to have two. Okay, and then what do you plan to read next? 
Um, so I just got this huge stack of ARCs from a Southern Independent Booksellers Conference, and I think I'm going to read Fire Sermon next. Okay. So fingers crossed. I hope it's really good. And that's the tag. Yay! Bye! Make sure to follow us on all of our social media. I'll link it down below. And make sure to like and subscribe. Bye! Am I even allowed to talk about this on air? <laughs> um,